Uh, we've been uh, reading your stuff, uh, and you know, you wrote uh, a blog about saying that NATO ba is back to basics, right? Yeah. No, what no, do you mean is, by saying that? Well, this this so NATO's been NATO's rediscovered itself in this summit. Yeah. is The way I look at it, they kind of found themselves again. Um, for years, we've been hearing, you know, what is NATO for? Well, now we know what NATO's for. Um, for 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 years, they've been doing out of area. Uh, operations in places like Afghanistan. They've been look, focusing on expansion. Well, right at the, at the summit in Wales, what NATO returned to is its its primary core original mission, defending its members from outside attack. Because some of its members, particularly the Baltic states and Poland and Romania, countries that are closer to the frontier with Russia, um, are, are nervous right now. That they, uh, particularly in the Baltic states, that the events in Ukraine these little green men, this hybrid conflict. They can cross the border and... You, yeah, what, what's going to happen in if, Estonia, if, if the right? little green men pop up in Estonia? What's NATO yeah. going to do? And it's a really important, it's not an academic question, it's a really important question because if you get a little green men situation in Estonia, well, is that an Article 5 violation according to NATO? I mean, Article 5, the gold standard of NATO, which is, requires all members to come to the defense of any one member that's, that's attacked. So if you attack little Estonia, well, you're also attacking the United States of America, you're attacking Germany, you're attacking France, and everybody has to come to the defense. What if you get a little green men situation in Estonia? Yeah, And, and what if NATO doesn't respond in what respond and go to war with Russia? Of what uh, then, NATO then, did, you know. Then Article 5 is empty. So NATO had yeah. to come up with some ways to prevent this, like sort of a prophylactic, uh, to, to inoculate these countries against this. And one of the things they came up with was this, uh, this, this rapid deployment reaction. force. Yeah, there already is an existing NATO, NATO reaction force, 13,000 13, But this people. is different. This is part of that. 13, these 13,000 that already exist, mm -hmm. they can be in anywhere in the world in five days. But this is 4,000. This is 4,000 drawn from that force, mm -hmm. and they could be at any NATO member in two days. So if you get some little green men coming across the Estonian border and, and so stirring up trouble in Europe, okay. they're going to be facing NATO in two days. Uh -huh. And this says something about the nature of modern warfare. So I mean, think do about, you think this is something substantial I do. that I, was I, missing I, before? You know, it, when this was first announced, a lot of people that didn't know military things were, were ridiculing this, like, oh, 4,000, yeah, right. ooh, you know. Well, I talked to some military <laughs> experts about this outside of NATO, some outside experts, and they said, actually, this is quite sufficient. Yeah. Um, this is the nature of modern warfare. We're in the age of high-tech, non-linear, hybrid-type wars, and we got to we have to respond the same way the same way Russia. Think about it: a couple thousand people in Ukraine turned the tide on the battlefield. Russia put what two, three thousand yeah, yeah. soldiers in, and it completely turned the tide of the battle. Well, four thousand NATO troops in in, in 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 Estonia or Latvia or any place trouble is because these little green men would come across the border. They shoot somebody. What if they accidentally shoot an American? Yeah, or a German, yeah. and that's it. Or a French, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So this is a this is a, a deterrent, yeah. and this is this is this is very important. The other thing that NATO did was establishing new military facilities. They're not calling them bases yet. Uh -huh. They're calling them forward deployment facilities in Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Romania, and Poland. Poland. And these these are forward deployment. How about bases. this rotation? Well, these will be, they'll be permanent. There'll be permanent. They won't, there won't be permanent troop stations. There it won't be like Rammstein in Germany, for example. Uh -huh, yeah. like this big permanent air base yeah, with yeah. shopping centers and everything. Why, why is that? Why is that? Is there any restriction? Uh, you know, there's posed a debate from well, the Russia. Yeah, there's a, there's a yeah. debate about that. The, 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 first of all, what, what the, these bases outside of these potential restrictions make sense because these are forward operating uh, forward operating facilities. So imagine you have to deploy your 4,000 NATO response force. There's already a place set up for them. The food's hot, the beds are ready, there's, there's, there's staging grounds where they can train and, and, and launch from. So these 4,000 troops get, get launched, get, you know, you have an emergency situation, they have, and there's already a base there for them, mm -hmm. ready to go, with already staff there, ready to, so, so they can go do their thing. So that's important. Now in terms of the restriction, the, one of the most, uh, contentious moments among the Allies at the summit was around the so-called Founding Act, this 1997 document that NATO signed with Russia when, in, in Helsinki, if you remember, when, they, when the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Poland, the first wave of former that? socialist countries, NATO and Russia signed, and this was a different time, this is Bill Clinton and, mm. and Boris Yeltsin, yeah, yeah. right? It was a different time when relations with Russia were, were good. In fact, Clinton described Russia as a partner at that very summit. Very good, they were very yeah. good. Well, they signed this founding act, and in, um, one of the points in this founding act was that it said, given the current security environment, NATO will not deploy permanent 
in substantial forces on the territory of its new member states. So now, first of all, this is a political document. It does not have the force of, the, of, 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 of international law. That's number one. And number two, what is permanent? What is substantial? Mm -hmm. And what is the current security environment? I mean, is today's security environment the same as 1997? I don't think so. Yeah, the, um, I think, uh, I think the forces the are so mobile, are you know, the technology. But also that Russia is, Russia is violating its obligations under the Founding Act by annexing Crimea, by moving its troops. Yeah, exactly. Up so the Estonians, the Latvians, the Lithuanians, the Poles, and the Romanians, the five countries that got these military facilities, the five countries that feel the most threatened, have said, you know, why don't we just scrap this thing. Mm -hmm. um, later, they insisted they didn't want to scrap it. I, I, I talked to some diplomats. They, they wanted it downplayed. Mm -hmm. and, and NATO had an argument about this. Yeah. Because some countries, like Germany, doesn't, doesn't want to scrap this. They think, you don't, let's not burn all our bridges with Russia right now. Yeah. Um, so Germany insisted, let's, let's, let's keep this. They reached a compromise. And if you listen to Secre uh, Secretary General Rasmussen's comments, he said, the Russia has vi we will keep the founding act we will we will continue to abide by the founding act because we're despite not the fact that they're forces, violating but Russia's violating this yeah Rasmussen. and there's a Rasmussen statement saying that you know let's not have illusions today we must face the reality that Russia does not consider NATO a partner we can see in Russian military documents, we can listen to statements from Russian political leaders that they consider NATO an adversary. I strongly regret that because I do believe that the right thing for Euro Atlantic security would be to develop a strong partnership with Russia. But of course, we cannot afford to be naive. We don't have any illusions. We are faced with the reality that Russia considers us an adversary, and we will adapt to that situation. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Russians no, always consider well, the, adversary. NATO the, as an adversary. Look, so man. we should uh, adapt ourselves to, adapt to that what reality. A, what, What's, a, what, what a difference six years and two wars make, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Six years and two wars. Because if you think back to Bucharest, completely different environment. The Bucharest summit in 2008. Yeah, yeah. The big item on the agenda then was membership action plans for Georgia and Ukraine. And Putin managed to persuade the, the NATO allies, particularly persuade the Germans, the French, and the Italians, the Americans not to, the give Putin, not to give membership action plans to Georgia. to Georgia and 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 Putin walked away triumphant. I remember I, I was at his last press conference at that, and he was the big winner in that summit. And how about now? Now NATO is now looking at Russia as not a partner that it can do business with, but as an adversary that it need that needs to be that needs to be needs to be countered, and and, and that's a that's a sea change. Yeah. Even oh, yeah. the Germans, mm -hmm. like every, everybody's not sure Germany didn't want to scrap the founding app. But Germany is really, really moved, and as right. goes Germany, so goes Europe in a lot of ways. Um, so, so there's, this was this was an important summit, and even this was not an this was not a, a, a an enlargement summit. They were not discussing new members of the summit. But something very, very important happened with Georgia, and that's well, about the, Georgia. Yeah, yeah that's very no, important. I, I had a very interesting discussion with Arakli Alassania, the, the Georgia's defense minister, at the end of the summit. Um, he was he was just really happy with the results of the summit. And I can see why, because NATO said that Georgia is the most interoperable of NATO's non-member partners. Mm -hmm. um, NATO has special relationships with four countries that are they're called enhanced partners. That's Georgia, that's Australia, that's Finland, and that's Sweden. And they said Georgia is the most interoperable of the partners. So it means that Georgia has gotten its forces so they can work together with NATO forces. And this will continue. Oh, the best student. Well, Georgia, got, yeah, not just the best student. They're to the point now where the next step for Georgia, the next step is not a membership action plan. The next step is an invitation to membership. So if Georgia had gotten this membership action plan back in 2008, they didn't mm -hmm. get it, they still would have fulfilled all of the conditions yeah. that were in that membership action plan. And Secretary, Rasmussen, Secretary General Rasmussen said it right, right, very clearly. The next step for Georgia is membership.
Um, much. So it's there, not, was there any statement also about other partner countries like Armenia and others or, or I some other? I honestly didn't oh, hear any well, statements about you know this that you know NATO's doors are open. Oh yeah, well yeah, NATO's doors are always open. NATO's for for an, anyone for who, who fulfills who the you know requirements. requirements. Yeah, any country that can reasonably called be called European. That fulfills In, the uh, Brian, uh, last question: If we know that there are a lot of criticism leveled at NATO before now. Uh, and these critics, what would you, what, what, what would be the main, you know, target of criticism this time? You know, it, was there a lot of lip service and, you know, no, I, this actually, time I was... No, I think this was a really substantial summit. Yeah, um, I mean, really, I mean, NATO's mission, it's fun, everybody's saying, what's NATO doing about Ukraine? Well, Ukraine... It's, it's, it's important. We're all very worried and concerned about the events. So are they going, first of all, to, to help Ukraine protect militarily? Their, protect their members. There's, there's talk about, non, about, about assistance to Ukraine, but it, the, the language is very ambiguous. Yeah, I don't know ambiguous, what that's going to turn yeah. into. Um, but NATO's primary function is protecting its members. If NATO can't protect Estonia, mm -hmm. and Latvia, and Lithuania, and Poland, and these countries that are on the eastern flank... Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you.